Hello, this is Eric White. Got a question recently on OpenXML Developer on how to retrieve columns of a spreadsheet. The reader on OpenXML Developer needed to retrieve all the values in the first column and populate a drop down list using those values, then retrieve all the values in the second column populate another drop down list and so on. Some time ago I wrote some code to query spreadsheets using link. That code is written in C sharp but it's pretty easy to use that code from VB. As I'm putting together this example I'm going to record what I do in a screencast so it's as easy as possible for VB users to recreate what I'm doing here. I'll create a new project. It'll be a Visual Basic console application. It'll use the .NET Framework 4, although I believe the .NET Framework 3.5 would work just as well. I'm going to tell it to create a directory for the solution and this part I'm going to leave it as console application one. Here's the blog post that contains the code that we're going to use for this example. Here's a bit.ly shortened link if you want to go there directly. I'm going to come down to the bottom, click on this link, save it, put it into my public documents folder. I'll extract it. I need this C sharp module right here. I'm going to add a new project. This will be a Windows class library .NET 4. I'll name this project LTX OpenXML and click OK. I'm going to paste LTX OpenXML in that new project I just created. I'll add an existing item. I'll add that and delete the class one. There's the code. We're going to have to add a reference to document format.openxml and Windows base. That now compiles properly. Here I'm going to add a reference to another project. I'm going to add the reference to the LTX OpenXML project. I'm going to have to use this namespace of Microsoft.examples.LTX OpenXML. I'll have to create a Excel worksheet that will work for us. The code that is in that blog post works in a super easy fashion if you were to convert this to a table. So for example, if you indicate that this is a table in that fashion, the code works really easily. When I get done, I will show you the code to do it if the data is in a table. But let's try to do it where the data is just an ordinary Excel worksheet. Let's save data.xlsx and close it. I also need to add 
the references to the main console application. We need references to document format.openxml and a reference to Windows Base. Just to save you the painful task of watching me type and get all the code right, I stopped the screencast there for a moment and did a little typing. Here's the entire example. First of all, at the top, we have to import document format.openxml.packaging and import the namespace of the C sharp code that we'll be using. Then down here, we open up the spreadsheet and write the contents of the spreadsheet to the console. When I run it, it looks something like this. And here coming up to the top, we can see the contents of the spreadsheet. There's the row ID, spans one to three, column A1, column B1, column C1, row ID two, spans one to three, column A2, column B2, and column C2 and so on. This is interesting, but if we want to modify this example so that we just get the data out of column B, let's see what we have to do. Let's go to this line right here where we iterate through all the cells for each row. Let's add some code that says where C dot column ID is equal to B. And then when we run it, it looks something like this. And we get just the values in column B. Now let's change this example so that it outputs only column B and just the values. I've modified the code so that it looks at the cell type and if the cell type is S, in other words, if it's a shared string, then this writes the shared string out to the console. And if it's not a shared string, then if the cell value is not nothing, then it writes the cell value to the console. Let's run it. And this shows what we expected to see. Now I can change this to dump out the values for the third column. So let's change this to column C. Just for neatness's sake, we'll change that to column C. And now when we run it, we see all the values of column C, or the third column. Now last, I'm going to alter the code and show you how you can write the code if those cells are actually a table in that Excel workbook. I am going to comment all of that code out right there. Now I'm going to go modify that test workbook so that it has a table in it instead of ordinary cells. Select the region, insert a table. My table does have headers. And we'll notice that our column headers are call one, call two, and call three. One more thing, I am going to change this table name to my table. Save it. So now I've modified this example to use the syntax that you can use if you have a table in the workbook instead of just data in a sheet first key point is that to write your query, you can just say from I in doc dot table, open parenthesis, my table, close parenthesis, dot table rows. The point about this is this is operating on the spreadsheet document. If you recall up here in the code up above, after opening up the spreadsheet document, then you have to retrieve the worksheet using get part by ID. In this particular case, I cheated a little bit in that I hard coded the relationship ID of RID1 in a 
more robust fashion, what you would want to do is iterate through the worksheets looking for the one that you want. And if you want the first one, then you would get it out by looking up the relationship ID in the list of worksheets for a particular workbook. So that's a little bit more work. But tables are global for an entire spreadsheet document. So here you can just indicate that I want the table with the name my table. Then you can iterate through the results of the query, outputting the values. One key point about this is that here we use the indexed properties where we specify the column name in the parentheses. And when we run this example, we can see the values that we retrieved from that worksheet. That's all I'm going to cover in this example. I showed you how to use the C Sharp module LTX OpenXML, but use it from Visual Basic and retrieve the data in a spreadsheet in a variety of fashions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.